So the second question is, do you believe that there is a good old boy network, yes or no? And if you tell us yes, how will you be impartial when you govern, making decisions based upon the greatest good for the community? Yeah, there is. Um, and I have, uh, as a county commissioner, I have been to serve with the great county commissioners, Phil Spisansky and Jan Platt and Sylvia Kimball Rodriguez, and we are committed to sound ethical government. Um, I have seen across all governments, in my opinion, an erosion of that good, honest, ethical government. And there's no rule you can do, right? There's no set of standards you can do. You have to elect people that are perfect, perfectly willing to say no to the people who support them, and yes to the people that didn't. And so you've got to look at our records. I think there's an awful lot of grudge holding that goes on. I think there's a lot of great ideas that don't happen because we brought them. Why is it the ferries running now? That's nuts. They take thousands of people off our roadways. They should be running three years ago. They get all clowned up by who knows who and who contributed to who. I hate that stuff and I will not tolerate it. Thank you. Excellent. You know, it goes directly to integrity in government, uh, one of the four pillars that I have in the neighborhood uh, Bill of Rights. I served on the Civil Service Board uh, before I became an elected official, and I will tell you, the way that the management was done in terms of when people were getting, uh, when getting fired and how they were disciplined had more to do with the personality of the people that were in that room than it had to do with the performance of the work that was, uh, that was supposed to be done. We will change that. We want to make sure that we're going to have performance standards that are met each and every year. When I come in, we're going to ask for a resignation of each one of the senior managers with no date on it. And I'm going to ask them to show that their performance in their departments was uh, what, they, what we expected as a city. And if they don't, I'm going to accept that resignation from that senior manager because that's the way you're supposed to lead. Keep them to a particular commitment and make sure that uh, the promises that we make are kept. Thank you. The question is, is there, is there a good old boy network? There sure as hell is. And it, as part of my campaign, I am not taking any more than $500 campaign contribution from anybody because I'm not going to be indebted to any special interest or have to sell the city. I'm going to do what's right for the people of Tampa and get rid of this click and old boy network that exists. That's no way to run a business. Get the words right out of my mouth. You're damn right there's a good old boy network going on here. And I'll tell you what, one of the easiest ways is to make sure that the people that you elect don't have financial hooks in their back. I'm really proud to stay, stand up here right now and tell you that of the $80,000 I've raised so far in this campaign, which may be peanuts to some, but it's pretty impressive when you think that every single dollar that I've raised has been on the shoulders of hard-working men and women. I do not have a political action committee. I have no special interest group backing me up. If you want to see where the good old boy network is, follow the money. There's no way you can get elected using the special interest group and then stand here before you right now and say that you're not a part of the good old boy network. The way you get rid of the good old boy network is you start to elect people that don't follow the plan, that don't look like traditional politics. If you don't like the way politics look, maybe you should vote for somebody who doesn't look like a politician. Thank you. I think that perception is the absolute enemy of the truth. The truth is, no, I don't think there's a good old boy network, but I think the perception is, yes, there is. And why do we think that? It's because most of us feel disenfranchised. Most of us feel ignored. Most of us feel that our thoughts, our feelings, our ideas, what we want, what we need in our own neighborhoods is being ignored. So yes, I think there's a perception that there's a good old boy network. I think that you feel that you're not being listened to, and that makes you feel like there's a good old boy network. But in truth, I don't think it exists. But I need to end that perception, and I will do it. We'll get the neighborhoods again connected, so there won't be that feeling that there's any good old boy network. Well, I, I think this is a very 
very tough question because, in fact, I, I think there is a good old boy network, and we all know that. But the question is, what are you going to do to make sure that government operates in an equitable and fair way? You know, there was some publicity this week about a complaint letter that some of us received. And one of the things that can happen inside of the city is currently the people in charge investigate when there's an allegation of wrongdoing. If you're going to actually clean things up and want to be objective, you really need a separate track for investigations to go on. You really need people doing investigations inside the city that don't report up the chain of command. If you, if you really want to consider what the major threats are to the integrity of our government, it's corruption inside of our city departments. And so when there's allegations of that, you can't have the Fox investigate the House. You have to have somebody outside investigate what's going on who can be impartial and give you basically a, a clean report. Thank you. Well, this is a very, very difficult uh, uh, question. You know, it's we have a number of checks and balances uh, within all of the departments of this city to ensure fairness. We also have testing processes for promotions and those types of things that follow all along the civil service rules. But again, we're dealing with human beings. And as was stated, we're dealing with individuals' perceptions as well. And all of our perceptions are reality. But I can say that within the city, we do our best to ensure that everything is as equitable as it can be when you're dealing with human beings. I also agree with Harry that we have to have, you have to have objectivity in that. You know, you have to, in the, the uh, investigations and so forth, it has to be removed from the individuals that are playing a part in that. And I know that there, that happens to a degree, but not as much as it should. So that's something that I certainly will be looking at as your next mayor. All right.